All right, praise the Lord, everybody. Come on, somebody give the, land, the Lord a hand clap of praise. Is he worthy? Come on, stand up on your feet. I know it's a rainy Sunday, but Sunday rain is good for us. I just cut my grass and reseeded my grass and uh, from this winter dreadful season. And, and in due time, I'm going to reap what we sowed, and new grass is going to come up. Amen? So it doesn't matter how it looks outside. It doesn't matter what's going on. A new season is coming. Do you believe that? Let's quickly just open up with Psalm 103, the Lord I just wanted to read this today because sometimes we come to church and we say, yes, yeah, the right thing to do because I'm a Christian. I'm supposed to be there on Sunday. But we should always remember that God is the one who draws us to this place. Amen. He wants to be, he wants us to be in his presence. And it doesn't matter what's going on or what you're encountering. How many of you know that he's always worthy of praise? He's always worthy of glory. And he's always worthy to be blessed. Amen. So this is Psalm 103. And then we'll just lift our hands, pray and get right into it. But he says, very familiar, bless the Lord, all my soul, and all that is within me. Bless his holy name. Bless the Lord, all my soul. And look at this, forget not his benefits. Some, how many know sometimes we forget the goodness of God? Amen. So if you don't have a reason to bless the Lord today, I'm going to give you just a few. You ready? Bless the Lord, he who pardons all my iniquities. On a daily basis, I get up and the Bible says his mercies are new each and every morning, right? He who heals all my diseases. How many of you have ever been healed by the Lord? Raise your hand. Raise your hand. I remember when I was nine years old and I was run over by a vehicle, I was supposed to have a foot shorter than the other and wear an orthopedic shoe. But as you can look at me right now, the Lord, through a miraculous healing, extended my leg, and I'm not limping all over the place. Amen? Come on. Let's not forget where the Lord has brought us from. Come on. He's the one who redeems your life from the pit. Woo! I don't know about you, but his arm is not too short that he can't reach down and pick you up out of the pit that you're in. Come on. He who is the one who crowns you, literally the Hebrew word for that means he surrounds you with loving kindness and compassion. He will satisfy your years with good things so that your youth will be renewed like the eagle. He performs righteous deeds and judgments for all who are oppressed. Come on, some of you have been into some situations and you've been praying to the Lord, give me justice, and the Lord will begin to move for you. I believe that. He made his, his, made his ways known to Moses, his acts to the sons of Israel. The Lord is compassionate and gracious. He is slow to anger and abounding in loving kindness. Come on, this was Old Testament. This was Old Testament before Jesus even came on this earth. He was slow to anger, abounding, abounding in loving kindness. He will not always strive with us, nor will he keep his anger forever. And we'll finish it here. He has not dealt with us according to our sins, and he has not rewarded us according to our iniquities. Do we serve an awesome God this morning? Come on, lift your hands as we pray. Holy Ghost, be in this place today. Holy Spirit, we ask for the revelation of Jesus Christ. We ask for the revelation of a loving Father that is slow to anger and abounding in love. Spirit of God, we give you the service today. You who searches even the deepest things of the Father, I pray that you come and release to us today exactly what God has thought about for us in Jesus' name. Come on, somebody shout unto the Lord with a voice of triumph and let's worship.
for selfish reasons, God, but to pour out on those who need it, God. Fill us up this morning, fill us up this morning with your love, with your love. to tell for the dry season is over there is a cloud beginning to swell to the skies heavy with blessings lift your eyes offer your heart Jesus Christ has opened the heavens and now we receive the Spirit of God. We receive your
anticipation we await the promise to come for everything that you have spoken it will come to pass let it be Anticipation, we await the promise to come. For everything that you have spoken, it will come to pass. Lord, let it be.
somebody just lift their hands to the Lord today come on honor his presence the promise of God is this where the spirit of the Lord is there is liberty come on somebody needs to prophesy that right now where the spirit of the Lord is there is freedom so today we declare in the name of Jesus that one thing that has it's broken in Jesus' name. Come on. That child is coming home. That marriage is being restored in the name of Jesus. That addiction that has bound you for so long is broken in Jesus' name. Woo! Come on, real quickly. Somebody lay a hand on someone next to you. We're going to be a family today, and we're going to pray for one another. Father, in the name of Jesus, we pray right now, God, that you make us one in spirit, Father, as the Lord is one. God, we pray for our brother. We pray for our sister. God, I pray that you move in power and in demonstration of your spirit. Father, we declare the Lord of hosts is with us. The God of Jacob is our refuge. The Lord of hosts is with us. The God of Jacob is our refuge. Father, I speak peace where there has been a storm. I pray joy and peace in the Holy Ghost where there has been depression, where there has been weakness in Jesus' name. Father, we make a declaration that you are our refuge and you are our strong tower. Come on, pray. Father, we pray over our brothers and 
Jesus' name. Oh, come on, pray. Pray. Move, God. Move, God, in the lives of our brothers and sisters. Hey, Father, we speak every word that has been spoken over them to come to fruition now in Jesus' name. Worship the Lord for a little bit longer. Woo! Worthy is the Lamb. Worthy is the Lamb. Woo! Come on, I don't know where you're at today, but I'm just going to quote the scripture to you. Jesus said, Be not afraid, for I have overcome the world. Come on, we serve a God who's alive. We serve a God who is active and sustains us. Mm. Thank you, Lord, for even in our faith, uh, in our faithfulness, you remain faithful. Even when we miss the mark, you still pour out love and mercy upon us. Thank you, Lord, that your eye is upon our Father's house, God. Thank you, Lord, that each and every person under the sound of my voice matters to you. You desire, Father, to make yourself known to each and every person. Father, and I rebuke the resistance of the adversary that is raising its head to stop us from encountering who you are in our lives. No more in Jesus' name. No more. I rebuke the lie of the adversary that you are alone and that there is no mercy, and no love, and no hope for you. I bind that lie in Jesus' name. Come on. I break on Father, steal the accuser's accusation right now. In Jesus' name. Woo! God is good, amen. Thank you, Lord. Do you feel the presence of God or am I the only one? He's here to do a work. I believe that whole heart. You have a choice today. You can either allow him to do his job and to help you in your infirmities and in your weaknesses, or you can leave this place the same way you came in. And I pray that today you will encounter him in such a way that you leave out of this place free and no longer bound to whatever is binding you. You know, Scripture says that the path of a righteous person grows brighter and brighter, not dimmer and dimmer. So if you find yourself in darkness today, I believe that by the time you leave this place, you will be walking in the light of the sun. Because he is the light, 
And then let me just prophesy this over you and just speak this over you today. It is in the darkest and the most void of places that God commands light. So if you find yourself in a place of utter darkness, get ready. Light is about to break forth. I don't know about you, but I received that for myself. Light is about to break forth. You were never meant to stay in darkness. Come on. That's not the gospel. <laughs> that's not the gospel of good news. Meant to stay bound, meant to stay in the same condition that you were when Christ first found you. There's freedom and victory in the name of Jesus. The old timers had it right when they used to sing about the blood and the power of Jesus. Maybe we should get back to those kind of songs, you know. There's power in the blood. Power in the blood. Come on. There's still power in the blood of Jesus to set you free. Woo. I'm grateful for that. That the name of Jesus is still the name above every other name. That he is still, we're still seated with him in heavenly places, far above all power, principality, and authority in this age and the age to come. Woo! Amen. Come on, man. I'm not just stalling up here. I'm just trying to build up confidence in you once again. I'm just trying to build confidence in you once again and let that spirit man that has been held down for so long break forth out of you. Amen. Lord Jesus, I don't even know where he's going to take me today, but I feel him so strong. We can take a seat. Go ahead and take your seat. I promise I won't be that long, but I'm just so excited of what I'm, what I'm been feeling today. But we, before we continue, can we just pray for our pastor? Can we just pray for our kids? Is that all right? Father, in the name of Jesus, we come to you, Lord. Father, we thank you for the angel of this house, God. Father, we lift up Pastor Odie and Wanda right now to you, God. We ask that your hand may be upon their lives. Father, I pray that you release revelation to them, Lord. That as they seek you, you may keep your word. You said in your word, if you seek me, you will find me. Father, I pray that you... Draw them, Lord, that they may run after you. Father, I pray that you crown them with loving kindness, with mercy, with strength, and with goodness, Lord. I pray, Father, that you just pour into their inner man, Lord, and that you strengthen them in the Holy Spirit, God, that you bless them as they go in and that you bless them as they go out. We speak that they are the head and not the tail, Father. We speak that whatever their hand touches will prosper, God. That you may bless them in every endeavor, Father, that they put their heart and their mind to. We honor you and we love you in the name of Jesus. And the church says amen. Woo. Jesus is good, amen. I don't even know where to go from here. But we're going to get into the word. I have one desire today, one desire for you that you may walk out of this place with your cup overflowing today. We all find ourselves in, in, in different walks of life, but we're united by the Holy Spirit. You know, each person in this place has a different personality. And we come into this place, but we put all that aside and we keep our mind on him and him alone. So today we're going to today we're going to just get into we're going to go off of Romans chapter eight. That's where the Lord took me this week. And we're going to talk about the third person of the Trinity. And a lot of people don't really know about him. Uh, and, and I honestly, I blame the church. Because he's, they don't teach about him. But he's of utter importance because without him, the church would have never been initiated. 
He's the one that Jesus said, I will not leave you orphans. I will come back to you. But in the meantime, I will send you an advocate, parakletos, a helper that will lead you into all truth and that will remind you of the things that I have said. Amen. So today we're going to talk about the Holy Spirit and why. And, you know, and again, if you're looking for like the most awesome revelation, this ain't it. Okay, I mean, the Holy Spirit is a great revelation. I'm not here. I'm not a T.D. Jakes. I'm not a Pastor Rob Parsley. I'm not writing a book. I just love the Word, and I love what the Word says. So how, there's sometimes where I got to a point once in my life where I would read the Word to try to find sermons. I'm, I'm past that. I read the Word as devotion, and I say, Lord, let this Word speak to me. And if so, the Lord has me speak something on it, then there it is. Amen. But we're going to get past the whole Man, listen, I don't, and I'm, I'm being nice and as loving as I can be, but the, whole, the, the Bible says that the promises of the Lord are yes and amen, so I already got my yes and my amen, okay? We're not going to, if you don't say yes and amen, that's fine, but I hope that you open up your hearts and open up your ears and open up your mind to comprehend what the Spirit of God is trying to tell us, amen? I love you, and we're going to get into the Word, so let's just go to, we're not going to read some scripture uh, we're just going to pray real quick, and then we're going to get into this word, and we're just going to, because I have like 20-something scriptures to touch on out of Romans chapter 8. Don't worry about it. I'm not going to keep you too long. But we're going to get in the word, and we're going to ask the Spirit of God to sow into our hearts, to uproot those things which are not of him, and to place those things that he desires that we may be able to have fruitful lives in the Spirit. Amen. Are you willing to do that today? So, Father, we just pray over the word, and we just ask you, Holy Spirit, to do what you do best. I pray that you till the heart, Father, today of your people. I ask you, Lord, that you give us ears to hear and a mind to comprehend what the Spirit of God is saying to us today. I ask you right now, Father, that you release the spirit of wisdom and revelation in the knowledge of Jesus that we may know what is the hope of our calling, Father, and in in, in your inheritance in the saints, Lord. I pray right now, Father, that the enemy may not come, Lord, and steal the word that's about to be delivered unto us today. I pray for perfect soil, God. That perfect, fertile soil, Lord, that will grow fruit, Father, from this word. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Amen. So let's get into the word. We're just going to go off of Romans chapter 8, verse 5. And we're going to go down up through about verse 26. I want you to look at your neighbor and just say, newness of life. Newness of life. That is one thing we tend to forget. The moment we got saved, the moment the Holy Spirit arrested our hearts, and we saw our sinful life based upon a holy God, and we accepted Jesus as Lord and as Savior, instantly the regenerating work of the Holy Spirit began. Right? And he released unto us newness of life. So let's go over this. For those who are according, well, you know what? Let's just start from, let's read in context. Let's go from the verse chapter 1, I mean chapter 8 verse 1. There is therefore now no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus. For the law of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus has set you free from the law of sin and death. For what the law could not do weak as it was through the flesh, God did sending his own son in the likeness of sinful flesh. And as an offering for sin, he condemned sin in the flesh. In order that the requirement of the law might be fulfilled in us who do not walk according to the flesh, but according to the Spirit. For those who are according to the flesh, they set their minds, where am I here? They set their minds on the things of the flesh, but those who are according to the Spirit, the things of the Spirit. Let's stop there for just a moment. When the Lord released newness of life to you, he set an equation up. And here it was. Spirit over flesh, right? Not flesh over spirit. When we talk about flesh, we talk about 
the purposes, the selfish purposes and the f- selfish desires that our flesh want. We can, we can, I mean, we can go deep into what that means, but it, it, it can lead to that self-agenda, self-will, but it also can lead to uh, self-indulgences, uh, lust, sexual immorality. We're going to get into that in just a minute. The moment we, the moment we place flesh over spirit, we upset the spiritual balance of things. See, when Adam came and he died, our pastor has taught this before. When Adam came and he died, because of his sin, it was flesh over spirit. But the Bible says that when the Holy Spirit came down in Acts chapter 2, the Lord reversed it. It became spirit over flesh. And, And all of your walk in Christianity is based upon that. If you go read 1 Corinthians chapter 2, Paul begins to talk about the, the people who are walking in the flesh are not able to comprehend the things of the spirit. Because they're of spirit. There I go spitting. I'm sorry. Somebody said one time, Brandon spits. Okay. Bless the Lord. Moving on. The spirit, spiritual things cannot be really understood by the flesh whatsoever. That's what Paul went to go say in 1 Corinthians chapter 2, verse 10. Right? And that's why we get ourselves into a lot of trouble when we place flesh over spirit. That's where, uh, you know, I remember when I was in Bible college, you know, the Lord took me through a consecration, right? And I'm going to be using a lot of, like, my story, so, you know, if you don't like it, whatever. I'm just kidding. <laughs> so the Lord, the Lord basically took me through a consecration period, right? And I went, seek, I got myself in trouble. I put flesh over spirit, right? And I found myself in a place where I was, like, totally broken, And we're going to get into that in just a minute, what it basically means. Totally broken. So the Lord sent me through a consecration period where I began to, I mean, I got rid of my cell phone. I decided to consecrate myself to the Lord for about a year. And I just started seeking the face of God. And here's what happened. The promises of God is this. If you seek him, you're going to find him. He said that. Right? So I began to, the Lord did a turnaround for me and my spirit began to take over my flesh. And God started pouring out things to me about me. Things that my flesh did not want to see. Because as scripture says, spirit and flesh are in enmity with one another. Your flesh does not want to receive from the spirit. Because your flesh is going to be put in check by the spirit. Right? So I began to walk in the spirit and just trying to seek the Lord. And, 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 and not to boast or nothing, but man, God gave me a lot of wisdom about certain things. And then at one point, the Lord released me and allowed me to speak to people about certain things that he had basically given me. Well, you saw something. I mean, I had a lot of criticism about that because everybody, a lot of people looked at me and said, man, he's walking like he's holier than thou. And that's not even the point. Somebody walking in the flesh will envy someone walking in the spirit. And that's just the matter of fact. That's what happens. Because like Paul says in Romans here, and just, we'll get to it. Flesh and spirit are at odds with one another. And who doesn't want to walk in a place of total freedom? Right? And you find yourself in a place that if you're seeking after the flesh and you see somebody walking in the spirit, a little bit of jealousy and envy can come because you want that type of freedom. And here's the awesome thing. You can get it. You can get it. And it's just by putting down your flesh. Right? Right? There, I mean, we're not called to be perfect, but it's, it, I mean, there's this thing between grace and holiness. Jesus released grace, but it's the grace of God that pushes you toward holiness. Right? So when we put flesh over spirit, the balance of things is totally messed up. And I've been there multiple times. I mean, let's go out to dinner. We can talk for like three hours of how I've messed up my life multiple times because I have put flesh over spirit. Moving on to verse 6, he says, For the mindset on the flesh is death, but the mindset on the spirit is life and peace. That, word, that Greek word for death, thanatos, it's literally used as a metaphor. It means misery of the soul. How many of you have ever walked in sin and you've just been the most miserable person in your life? No joy. No peace, no love, no mercy, self-condemnation, right? 
People try to speak into your life and you can't receive it because you've looked at yourself as the most unworthy thing, scum of the earth. You miserable, absolutely miserable. And you can't stand when you see somebody walking in freedom because the Holy Spirit is trying to fight through all that mess. You know, the, the one thing that Elder G said one time when he came, he said, the Holy Spirit is a gentleman. He will never force himself on you, but he will do everything in his power to try to influence you and return you back to your original creation that he, encountered you, he created you to be. Right? We have too many people walking around in misery because of the flesh. And then you know what the funny thing about it is? It's a change in mindset. It's, it's, you have to make up your mind. I will no longer walk in the flesh. I choose to, to, to pursue the spirit. Because the spirit is foundation of all things. The Holy Spirit equips you for the work of Christ. The Holy Spirit empowers you to be a witness. The Holy Spirit speaks. But the Bible says that Paul and Barnabas were pulled out I believe the church of, it might have happened the church of Corinth. It was somewhere in, in the book of Acts. The Bible says that as they were in prayer, there were apostles and elders. The Holy Spirit spoke and said, I need you to set apart for me for work, Paul and Barnabas. So the Holy Spirit speaks in that manner, right? We cannot walk around. God does not desire us to walk around as, as miserable. That's not, the, that's not a life in Christ. Waking up every day and being miserable, in misery, because we, can, we cannot stop believing the lie of the adversary. That's why one of my favorite prayers to pray all the time is I pray, I, I silence the voice of the adversary, and I speak that only the voice of the Holy Spirit may speak. Take a man that way. Take a man that way. He is the father of lies. The truth is literally not in him. I mean, that blows my mind. Like, it's like me going up to, it's like somebody coming up to me and being, Brandon, your shirt's pink. And I'm like, nope, it's red. Right? I mean, that's, it's a lie. You, like, I we're getting stopped for a ticket. Sir, were you speeding? No, I was going under the speed limit, but I clocked you at 95. Nope, I was going 50. That is literally his nature. He cannot tell the truth. At all. So if he says, hey, you're going to die. No, devil, I'm going to live. You're going to be bound forever. No, devil, I am free in Jesus. Come on. Sometimes you have to encourage yourself that way. When I was going through anxiety and through fear, just to, which I, I, I pray, and, I, and, and thank you so much for the prayer. I can honestly say for the last four months, I've been walking in complete and total freedom because of this mindset change that I had. You gotta be able to battle the enemy's lies with the word of God. That's the reason it's called the sword of the spirit. The sword of the spirit. The spirit walks, you, this, you are literally the sword that the spirit carries. You're the spirit's ammunition. When you begin to speak this word. So it came a time when I was going through anxiety and the enemy says, you're gonna have a heart attack, Brandon. You're, gonna have a, you're literally going to die. I could even stay at home by myself. And I'll just be honest to you. When we were having all those snow days, Katie would go to work and I would go to school because I couldn't stand being at home by myself because the enemy had place in my mind, you're going to die of a heart attack. You're literally going to die. You're 32 years old and your heart, and any little pain that I had in my heart, there I was. There I was like, I'm going to die. I'm going to die. I'm going to die. I got, I, and I set my mind on fleshly things and began to live as a miserable soul. But one day the truth of God entered me and I told the devil, okay, that's fine. If I die, ain't no problem because being absent in the body is being present with the Lord. Okay, and if I have a heart attack, I'll pass away, go be with Jesus, but ain't nothing going to change for you. You're still going to burn in the lake of fire. You're still going to burn. Ain't nothing you can do about it, devil. You can't lie your way out of it. Okay, you're still going to roast and toast and be well done in the lake of fire. And I'm not here, like, I hope they put you in that hottest part of, of, of hell or of, of the lake of fire. And I began to speak the truth of God to the adversary. Amen? It's a mindset change. Flesh to spirit. 
And oh, the enemy loved for you to be in the flesh. Because he knows, here's the thing, when you walk in the flesh, you give the enemy room to operate in your life. You give, you literally give the adversary access to operate in your life, right? Verse 7, what time is it? Okay, keep going. Verse 7, because, we already got to this, because the mindset of the flesh is hostile toward God, for it does not subject itself to the law of God, for it's not able to do so. It, the, the, the flesh, our thoughts and our purposes that are not of God are not able to submit itself to God. Right? But here's what Paul says. And those who are in the flesh, they cannot please God. That's why you walk in condemnation. Because you know the life that you are living is not able to please the Lord. Amen? You know, I, I had I, that gospel of grace, that perverted gospel of grace that says, you know, God's not mad at you. I believe that God is not angry with you. Even though the Bible just talks about people storing up wrath against themselves that they don't believe in Jesus. But there's, there, there, there is a lifestyle that we can live that even though God's not mad at you, he ain't pleased. And that's not a popular message. That if, if, that was, if that wasn't true, why does the Bible say there's seven sins that he hates? Right? There is a lifestyle we can live that is not pleasing unto the Lord. The Holy Spirit is capable of being grieved and being quenched. He has feelings. He has emotions. Right? That spirit that's deep within you, when you b- begin to live out a life in the flesh, it's grieved. Yeah. And it can be quenched in your life. You can cut off the purpose of God in your life for living a life in the flesh. Yeah. Amen? Yeah. All right. But this is what Paul says, and I'm going to declare this to you. However, you are not in the flesh but you are in the spirit. How many of you received that today? Our father's house, you are not in the flesh. You are called to live in the spirit, right? If indeed the spirit of God dwells in you, but if anyone does not have the spirit of Christ, he does not belong to him. That's just the word, right? You don't make me go to first John where he says, if you say you love the Lord, but basically you're living in sin, you are a liar, Right? That's the word. That's the word. If you say you love the Lord, but you hate your brother, you are a what? Liar. I'm saying that in love and his grace as much as I can, but that is the word. You lie not only to yourself, but you lie to those around you if you say you love the Lord, but hate your brother. Right? We're so accustomed to try to make a facade in front of everybody to seem like I have it all together. But the Holy Spirit is the one who intimately knows us. Because Scripture said the Spirit searches all things. Amen? So he keeps on going and says, If Christ is in you, though the body is dead because of sin, the Spirit is alive because of righteousness. Right? Right? This flesh is dead because of the original sin. But the Lord understood that. The Lord understood that whenever the, the, he was ascended to heaven, that this fleshly body, that those 12 misfits, basically the B team, right? I mean, if he picked them after they did what they did to Jesus, I know I'm good. He knew that the, their flesh was not capable of doing his calling and his bidding by itself. I mean, Period. So he says, I'm going to fix this, and I'm going to send the Holy Spirit to indwell in them, and they receive the baptism of the Holy Ghost to be empowered to accomplish the mission that God set apart. I mean, it's kind of, actually, it's kind of scary when you read it, that Jesus said, all right, I walked here for three years. You saw all these miracles. Half of you denied me, but you know what? We're not going to talk about that because I'm full of grace and mercy. I'm going to heaven. Oh, yeah, and by the way, it's up to you to finish the mission. That's scary. Like, whoa, whoa, what? Are you sure? You sure you can't just, I mean, we promise we will have, nobody will touch you. You sure you can't just walk around the earth for a couple more years? No, that's how much faith God has in you. That he knows that with his spirit, you are accomplishing what he's called you to do. Right? 
It doesn't matter how much you've messed up at all. The fact that Peter denied him three times and then, I mean, and then like cursed. I can just imagine. No, I don't. Beep, 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 beep. No, the man. Beep, beep, beep. Just cussing. Up a storm. And then after he sees Jesus and they're having fish like Joe preached last Sunday, he says, do you love me? And Peter says, yes, Jesus, I love you. If I was Jesus, I would have been like, mm-hmm. Sure you do. Let's not forget what you said and how many people you've denied me to. But the Lord is not that way. Just the fact that I know that God has faith in me, that he knows that by his spirit I am more than a conqueror and I am able to do great exploits with the Holy Ghost blows my mind. It blows my mind. And if the enemy can keep you from understanding that, the enemy has won. The enemy would love to keep us in our flesh. You know that, that when I begin to talk about misery of the soul, it eventually gets down to where it's used, where it says, you can live a, a miserable life, and if you don't change, it ultimately leads to hellfire. That's basically what, what, the, what the Greek means in that. Moving on so we can finish. I have like 10 more scriptures to go to. So he sets the equation. Dead body, spirit that's alive in Christ because of the Holy Spirit, Right? So here's what I love right here. He says, but of the spirit of him who, was, who raised Jesus from the dead dwells in you, he who raised Christ Jesus from the dead will also give you life to your mortal bodies through his spirit who indwells in you. Basically, Paul's saying, hey, the same thing you're baptized with is exactly what, I, what God used to raise Christ from the dead. Think about that. That's the same power that exists within you. Doesn't that blow your mind? Yeah. And half is not clicking. The Holy Spirit raised Christ from the dead. The Holy Spirit dwells within me. And the same power that raised Jesus is available to me. That absolutely blows my mind. Like I'm ready to, to see, like this mountain just crushed down right there because I said mountain move in Jesus' name. Right? That's the type of faith that I'm beginning to build up for myself. He will quicken your mortal bodies. So then, brethren, look what I love this about verse 12. We are under obligation. We're indebted to the Spirit because of what Jesus did. We're not an under obligation to the flesh. You're breaking contract when the Spirit, when you start living, acting, acting, acting up in the flesh. You're in breach of contract with the Holy Ghost. Come on. It's like Jesus dies and says, you no longer belong to yourself. You were purchased by my blood. And if you start acting outside of your nature, you're breaching contract with Jesus. And he's like, Holy Ghost, go get him. Because they're mine to begin with, period. Right? You were never intended to put on the old man when newness of life came back to you. That man is dead, crucified at the cross, no longer to take control. So you are doing something wrong if you decide to follow the Lord and put on that dead man. You're walking outside of your calling. That's all sin is, walking outside of what your nature is now. You were never intended to pick up that dead man. God, you pray, you better pray and thank the Lord that I'm not the Brandon I used to be. I'm just saying. I was not nice. I cursed like a sailor. I'm surprised Jesus didn't strike me down with lightning. Right? How many of you would love to have your old selves living in you again? No. No. Nobody. Walking in newness of life. Walking according to the Spirit. Right? How many of you have ever heard somebody say, oh, I can't help but sin? Right? I know we're not called to be perfect, but we're called to be like him. Right, we're walking in freedom, but Paul said in Galatians, do not use your freedom for perversion. Right? Because every time you ask the Spirit of God to set you free, guess what? That's his job. He's going to set you free. And you're going to walk in freedom again, but don't use that freedom to walk in perversion. Because he says here in verse, in verse 13, for if you are living according to the flesh, you must die but if by the Spirit you are putting to death the deeds of the body, you will live. It is possible to put the deeds of the flesh to death. Yeah, yeah. But you can't do it out of your own strength. Come on. Come on. 
You can't do it out of your own desire. The Holy Spirit is the only one that can kill those deeds. Real quick, and let's just go to Galatians. So in case you don't know what I'm talking about, I'm going to get you familiar with what it means. Give me a moment here. Want to tell me General Electric Power Company. Galatians, Ephesians, Philippians, Colossians. Woo! I, I paid $10,000 for Bible college, and I learned that from Wanda. <laughs> Lord, help me. <laughs> Lord, <laughs> help my dumbness. <laughs> Let's go to Galatians chapter 5. You know where I'm about to go to. If you're there, say amen. If you're not there, don't say amen because you're lying in the church. <laughs> Galatians chapter 5. It is what's for freedom that Christ set us free, therefore keep standing firm and do not be subject again to what? The yoke of slavery. Right? Here he was talking about circumcisions to the Galatians, but the way that it can be applied to is, is do not yoke yourself up with the old man. Because you have been set free. Don't go back to those things that bound you for you are no longer called to live that way. Let's go down to uh, verse 19. Paul goes to say in Romans, it is by the spirit of God that you can kill the deeds of the flesh. Well, what are those? Here we go. The deeds of the flesh are evident. We all, we all can see them. You can't hide it from us if you're walking in it. Right? Especially for those who have the spirit of discernment. They walk or they go into a church and they see and they're doing this right here. Right? They know it. What's that one meme of that one lady that she's like this? <laughs> Those of you who are millennials understand that one, right? I pray to be like that in the spirit one day. The deeds of the flesh are this. Immorality. Impurity. Sensuality. Idolatry. Sorcery. Enmities. Strife. Jealousy. Outbursts of anger. The Lord's still working on that one. <laughs> Disputes. Kids over there like, oh, my God, Brandon, please. <laughs> Dissensions, factions, no clicks. Amen? Woo. Yeah. Envying, drunkenness, carousing, and things like this of which I forewarn you, just as I have forewarned you that those who practice shall things shall not what? Inherit the kingdom of God. Can you imagine not going to heaven because you clicked up? That's scary. Right? And then he goes on to say, but the fruit of the Spirit is what? Love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, self-control. Against such things there is no law. Now, those who belong to Christ have crucified the flesh with its passions and desires. If we live by the Spirit, let us also walk by the Spirit. Let us not boastfully challenge one another, envying one another. All right, come on. Yeah. All right. That's what walking a life in the Spirit is. The fruit. And, and let me just tell you this right here. It's going to be difficult. Because your flesh does not want to submit. All right, come on. Your flesh does not want to submit. Then we have to go into our arsenal and do a little bit of fasting. Yeah. And kill the flesh in eating. Right? Because if you can kill the flesh with food, you can kill the flesh for anything else. Yeah. That's scientific. Two drives that humanity has. You want to know them? Food and sex. And I'll just put it out there. Don't get upset at me. That's just science, right? But those two things are, be, are able to be brought under your control through the Spirit. Come on, you're not animals. You're not animals. Walking around with no control, not being able to stop from doing stuff, the Spirit of God gives you the ability to walk in power. Amen. Amen. I hope you're receiving this. I'm almost done, I promise. Go back to Romans. I'm just trying to get you to understand of where God wants you to live. In the spirit realm. In the spirit kingdom. 
not led by the flesh, not led by what your desires and your purposes are. We're about to get to the point where we're going to deal with treating one another like family. I'll get to that in just a moment. Here we go. Let's go to verse 14. Here's what he said. Well, let's go to 13. For if you live in accordance with the flesh, you must die. But of the spirit, you are putting to death the deeds of the body you will live. For all who are being led by the spirit of God, these are sons of God. Here's the problem. When you're living according to the flesh and you're looking at each other according to the flesh, you don't see the family connection. You don't see the family connection whatsoever. That's why when we came Wednesday to pray, I began to pray. I said, Lord, unite us. Let us look at one another the way God sees us, covered by the blood of Jesus. Every time God looks at us, I promise you he sees the blood applied to our lives. Right? Those who are being led by the, by, the, by the Spirit of God, those are the sons of God. For you have not received a spirit of slavery leading to fear again, but you have received a spirit of adoption as sons by which we cry, Abba, Father. The Spirit himself who? What does he do? He bears witness with our spirit that we are children of God. Who confesses that? The Spirit, not the flesh. The flesh will never convince you that you are a son or a daughter. It's not going to happen. That's why when you start living in the flesh, you walk into condemnation and unworthiness because you have stopped the confession of the Holy Spirit. Do you you understand that? When you walk according to the flesh, nobody is speaking over you. You're a son of God. You're a daughter of God. You're a daughter of the king. You're a son of the king. No, when you walk in the spirit, you have that confession on a daily basis. You are a son and you are a daughter. It's the spirit himself who testifies that we are sons and daughters of God. That's why we are ought to walk in the spirit. Because we are to be united as one, as brothers and sisters. When we walk according to the flesh, that's where situations happen. Right? We're a big family. And all it is, sometimes when we have issues in the church as a body, is a sibling rivalry. Right? And we're never meant to walk like that. We're meant to love one another as Christ has loved us. Listen, I tell you, there's a lot of things that I have deep within me that you all probably wouldn't like, right? There's a lot of things within you that only you know who you are. And sometimes because we have different personality types, that those things sometimes tend to come out. They tend to come out, right? But we are not to focus on those things because the person to your right and the person to your left is not your enemy, It's your brother and it's your sister in the Lord. Here's the deal. We are all one day going to spend eternity before the Lord together. What's the difference now? Right? What's the difference now? I have this one student that I love. We have this rocky relationship in class and she's a believer and I'm a believer. We, I mean, we both have the same personality. That's why we butt heads. And she came into class, she's like, oh, you're so salty, oh, and you're so hateful, and blah, 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 blah. And I just, I didn't even say it. I just stopped. I said, Lord, when you're making my mansion in heaven, please put me next to Caitlin forever. <laughs> and she was like, and she just like walked away. <laughs> What's the difference between living in harmony and in unity with one another in the church and doing it in heaven? Yeah. There is no difference. It's not like if we have problems with one another, it's not like the rapture's going to happen and we're going to enter heaven and be like, oh, I forgave you now that we're in heaven. Oh, everything is so grand. Oh, the hills are, no, no, no. First of all, if your heart ain't right, you may not enter where you think you want to enter. Right? Come on, man, I want to experience heaven on earth as it is in heaven. And I don't want anything going on between us to stop us from including what God wants for us. Amen? That's why we look at one another in love and in harmony and be as forgiven as Jesus is to us. Every time that we go through something or that we sin against the Lord, Jesus doesn't go, okay, I'm going to forgive you, 
but I'm not going to forget. No, he doesn't say that. He doesn't say, well, yeah, uh, five years ago at 5.50 p.m., Brandon messed up this same way again. No, he don't do that. He loves me unconditionally. And where's my proof? He still stayed on the cross. He still stayed on the cross and forgave me of my sins. Being a Christian and being brothers with one another and sisters with another is a vulnerable position. L truly loving your neighbor is a vulnerable position. Because there's, there's not a perfect church. We're going to get hurt. Right? We're going to get upset over some things. But even in that, God can get the glory and God can get the victory if we look. Listen, loving one another unconditionally is a slap in the face to the devil. Yeah. Come on. If, if I get mad at my brother and I come up to him, I say, you know what? I forgive you, man. I love you. Let's go worship together. What is the enemy going to do? But run with his tail tucked between his legs. Because the enemy wants us to be, a, wants, wants us to be fleshly minded. Because he knows that if we are fleshly minded, he, ha he has an invitation to do what he wants to. But the moment we nip it up at the button and say, you know what, we're going to walk in the spirit. And we're going to walk according to what God wants for us. And we're going to forgive one another. And we're going to love one another. And we're going to go break bread at the Mexican restaurant. Yeah. <laughs> right? Yeah. Right? We're going to go break bread. And Maria's going to bring me a Pepsi. And Marge's going to give me some bomb chicken. And all this stuff. The enemy runs for its life. Because you have canceled the door and you have shut the door that the enemy thought he could sneak in through. Come on. There's been so many words released over this church and over each one of us. And you know what? The word that has been spoken over you, praise the Lord. Why am I going to get envious and jealous? Praise God. I hope that he pours his spirit out upon you. Well, Brandon, I've been called to be an evangelist and to, and to pray and to, and to preach to millions. Hallelujah. Where can I sow to see you do the work of Christ? Right? Come on. We should be honoring and we should be celebrating what God speaks over our lives. Because you know what? He is not a respecter of persons. And one day, my word is coming. Amen? I'm almost done. I already closed like four times, but that's all right. Here we go. Are you receiving this? I promise you, I'm, I'm trying to speak this in love and in grace. I told, I told Mama T today, I said, you know what? The Peter inside of me is locked up and tied down, and I'm trying to bring out my inner John. And I'm like, I promise you, I'm trying. But I just want to see his walk in victory, man. As a family, because we're, we're like Joe said last Sunday, where there is unity, God commands a blessing. Come on. God commands a blessing. So he begins, I don't even know where I'm at. Verse 14, sons and daughters of God. Let's start looking at each other as that. Let's just jump over to verse 26 so we can finish. Here's, here's what I wanted to really push today. It's okay if you are going through a season of darkness right now. It's okay if, 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 if you're walking in weakness today for some reason. It's all right because in your weaknesses, his perfect strength is made known. Yeah. That is one of the other jobs of the Holy Spirit. Verse 26, in the same way, the Spirit also helps our weaknesses. What that, what that word right there means, I don't even know how to say it in the Greek, but it starts with an A. It means weaknesses in the body right? Those little things that, that, that you just can't get rid of, that one sin that just keeps on hounding you. But it also means weakness in the soul when you're just burdened down. How many of you have ever been there before? You just, you just can't seem to get yourself back up, right? You tried praying, you tried fasting, you tried seeking the Lord, but it seems that every time you open up your mouth, you, you hit a wall, Right? That's what we love to call the wilderness. And let me tell you, and I'll tell you, as I said a couple weeks ago, the wilderness is ordained by God. Because it's in the wilderness where his power can move in a way that you've never seen it before. 
right? He says, in the same way, the Spirit helps us in our weaknesses because it's He Himself intercedes for us with groanings too deep for word. Sometimes when you get on your face and you say, God, I don't know how to pray. Be encouraged, my friend, because the Holy Ghost is praying for you regardless. First, First Corinthians chapter 2, verse 10. The Bible tells us that the Holy Spirit searches all things, even the deep things of God. He knows exactly what's going on in the mind of God. He, I mean, it's just like sometimes you think something about a person and you wish nobody would ever find out. I'm talking about it like that. The thoughts of God, he knows about it. Right? This is what blows me away right here. The Spirit knows exactly what God is thinking. Look what it says in verse 27. And he who searches the hearts, he knows the mind of the Spirit because the Spirit is interceding for the saints according to the will of God. The, the Spirit of God prays perfectly for you because he knows exactly what God is thinking about you. So the Holy Spirit is praying that exact thing and the perfect will of God manifests in your life. Musicians can come up. It manifests in your life. Sometimes, sometimes when you, when, I mean, there's been times when we, I've gone to pray, and all I could say deep within my heart is just, just O's come out. Oh, God. And that's all that has come out. And that's the Holy Spirit praying through you with groanings that cannot be understood. Praying the perfect will of God in your life because he knows exactly what he's thinking about you. He knows exactly what he's thinking about you. The Holy Spirit knows exactly what God wants for your life. He knows exactly what God wants for this church. The Spirit of God knows exactly what God wants for your job, for your family, for your marriage, for your children. And you know what the thing about it is? People who walk in the flesh Walk not knowing the will of God because the Bible says in 1 Corinthians 2.10 that God is willing to freely give us that wisdom through the Spirit. Why would we not seek the Spirit of God? Well, I need to know what God's will is for my life. You can't figure it out in the flesh. You can't figure it out in the flesh. I need to know what God's will is for my life. Pray in the Holy Ghost. Seek the Spirit of God. Right? Ask God for an indwelling of the Spirit and a baptism like you've never received it before. Because walking and praying in the Spirit will line you up directly to what God is thinking about you. That just blows my mind. That so many people in this world are walking lost, not knowing what God wants for them. And if they will just allow the Spirit of God to indwell with them, the Spirit of God will speak exactly what God wants you to do. You, may, you can go ahead and stand up on your feet. Listen, I don't know what you're going through today. I don't know what your circumstances are. We all go through, we all go through different things on a daily basis, man. But I know this one thing here for sure. In your greatest weakness, the Holy Spirit is working. In your greatest, in your greatest moments of need, in your greatest moments of darkness where you don't understand, the Spirit of God is speaking and it's the Spirit of God who can arrest your heart right now. It's the Spirit of God who can arrest your heart right now and speak the truth of God's Word into your life. So today we're going to seek the face of God here at this altar. Listen, I may not have all the answers because I'm just flesh, but I promise you that the Spirit of God knows exactly what you need today. Everything that you're going through, anything and everything that you may be going through in your family, that one lost loved one, that marriage that may seem like it's breaking apart, right? Confusion, not knowing which direction to go. All of that can be answered today if we seek the Spirit of God. Do you believe that today? Do you believe that today? So we're going to open up this altar right now, and we're going to ask the Holy Spirit. You know what? You know what I'm praying? I'm praying for a fresh baptism in the Holy Ghost over your life, right? The Bible says that you can't hold old wine, uh, new wine in an old wineskin. I pray that today, fresh rivers of living water may just be coming out of you. Sometimes you need to recharge, amen? How many of you ever walk around for days without charging your cell phone? Nobody. 
That's what it is with the Spirit of God. You need that, that push from the Holy Ghost to help you throughout the week. Right? Would you come and just let the Spirit of God minister to you? The Spirit of God is interceding right now before the Father. He's praying exactly what you need. Come on. There's no need to walk in darkness anymore. There's no need to walk in confusion. There's no need for that. There is. The perfect will of the Father and the Spirit of God is willing to release it to you. Willing to release it to you. Would you come? Would you come?